Hi, my name's Rich. This is a quick video demonstration of how to install and set up a password manager. In this particular video, I'm going to show you how to set up KeyPass X. There are many other password managers out there. Um, some of them are a bit easier to set up than this, but I find this is um, very secure and easy to use, and I've used it for several years now. Um, there's, there's lots of other information about why you should use a password manager um, that should be on this blog. Uh, I may even add some extra videos later on talking about different um, security aspects. But this is going to go through the very absolute sort of minimum basics of getting a password manager like this set up um, so you can use it. So first of all, you need to go to keypassx.org, go to the downloads page. And then if you're installing it on a Mac, download the Mac version. If you're installing it on Windows, the Windows version. Um, once that's downloaded, double click on the file, follow the instructions and just install the file like any other program. Then uh, we need to fire up the program. So we've got it down here, keep our sex. So it opens up the application and there's nothing in there at the moment. What we need to do is create a database which is basically where we're going to store all of our passwords and user information so up here on the white uh, square thing click on that now it pops up a dialog box that is asking for a password this is very very important part of the process so this password that you're going to create is the main password the master password that gets you into your key pass manager so anyone that could guess this could get into your passwords and have access to anything you put in there. So don't use a password that you've used elsewhere. Make something completely new, um, as secure as possible. So make it quite long. Um, I recommend a phrase or a song lyric or something with maybe some numbers added, um, special characters like an exclamation mark or um, a percentage sign. You can use spaces in these passwords. So it's perfectly acceptable to have spaces and it's really good uh, best practice. Um, First of all, write down what that this password is on a piece of paper now, so um, so that you remember it. It's amazing how many people do this. Go through, add all their passwords, and then forget what the master password is. And once you've forgotten it, there's no recover password functionality on this particular product. Um, that's why it's so secure. You you can't just uh, say, oh, please send me an email with a password on again, so I can get back into all my passwords. It has to be like this so that it's ultimately secure. So. Jot down what this password is on a piece of paper. Um, I'd probably recommend that you stick that in a, an old book that you, you don't read very often somewhere. So if you do forget over the next couple of hours or couple of days, you can get to it again. Um, so we're going to add the password in. So that's step one. The next step, which I fully encourage, is adding another level of security. Much, uh, much like a key for your front door, um, you can create a key file which you need to access your database in the future. So um, you could just set it up with one password, but I prefer to have the password and a key file. Um, without this key file, even if you've got the right password, you still can't get into your database. So in order to set this up, it's really simple. We just tick on, click on key file, click on generate key file. Um, you need to give your key file a name, so you could just call it key file. That's a little bit obvious if someone was looking for this kind of stuff, if they knew you used a password manager like this. So you could, you could call it uh, family uh, notes or, you know, so it could be anything, something not so obvious. Um, importantly, don't keep this file um, in a folder that you could accidentally delete it easily. So maybe not on the desktop or in your downloads folder. Um, I usually recommend somewhere in your documents folder, maybe creating a new folder, you know, um, trashed data or, you know, come up with something a bit obscure and nothing that seems valuable. Um, you know, don't put top secret password file or anything like that. Um, so our key file is called family notes and it's in trash data. Click save. You can see it's added the um, path there. And the password, so we click OK. It will ask us for the password again that we've just put in. So you've wrote that down on a piece of paper, so you can add that. Click OK. So now we're in the program, and you can see it here. Um, really quickly, 
to go through this on the left hand side are groups of passwords or accounts on the right hand side it will be the actual uh, account details so for example um, you could put as many groups in here as you like so let's just add a couple we're going to have shopping websites uh, we're going to have groups or banks and we're going to have uh, business you can then also add subgroups as well so right click on it add subgroup um, so you might want clients um, you might want uh, HMRC and if you're in the UK this is the name of the, the tax office um, and click the little arrow here so you can see that so you could start to categorize all of the different passwords so obviously in here you, you might have your any social networking usernames and passwords so Facebook um, LinkedIn Twitter all these kind of things um, ignore this pop-up that won't happen by default um, so basically add in um, all the different groups that you want you can add these in later as well and, and move things around and drag and drop um, the in the way you actually add a new um, a new entry is click on the, the group you want so let's say shopping websites go over to the right hand side add new entry right click add new entry or you can use the keyboard shortcut click this now in here um, it asks you for a number of different fields you don't have to fill in any of these uh, well obviously you need to fill in one uh, but you can fill in e either of them that you like so if you wanted to just say give it you should give it a title so let's just say Amazon UK that's the name of the the password entry that we're going to add you could put your username in here um, just to help you remember so you know me at acme.com and then obviously add your password um, you can do that down here uh, they should obviously match otherwise it won't let you save it you, there's lots of features in here there's a password generator if you can't think of a strong password you can add that in there you can add comments you can add expiry but we're not going to talk about any of that stuff the most important thing is to start putting all your passwords in here managing them securely uh, and then you can start going back and using different passwords for every single site making sure they're really secure and things like that so once you've got that information in there click OK and you can see it's added up here under shopping websites when you want to come back and look at it, you just double click and it shows you that information. Again, you click OK. So what we need to do now is one extra level of security. So if I was to walk away from my computer now um, or someone was to steal my laptop and um, open this up, they could obviously see my passwords just by double clicking on it. So what we want to do is set the program to automatically lock itself if it's inactive or I minimize it. So go up to key pass X here, select preferences. Under security, there's lots of options here, but these are the this is the quick ones that we want to look at. Um, you want to make sure that these two boxes here are ticked: lock workspace when minimizing the main window, and lock database after inactivity of X seconds. Uh, Ten seconds is far too short. You, you really want to put uh, 30 or you know 60 for this. Um, I'll put 10 and show you what happens when I do it. So click 10, um, click OK. If I just leave uh, the mouse alone um, and keep talking for 10 seconds, it should pop up and it will try and lock the database. Um, actually, it will, it will show uh, an error, which is saying, do you want to save the changes? So this will ask us the first time we do this, just click yes. This is basically we're giving our database, which is where we're storing all our passwords and name. So you could call it data. Um, again, like the key file, you can be a bit more specific, a uh, bit more obscure, and call it, um, you know, trash or you know something that you know someone was searching for they wouldn't know. Um, I'll go into detail in the blog post about where you save this, but for the purposes of this video, just save it in your whatever folder you save the the key file. Click save. So now our workspace has been locked. So anyone that did walk, walk up to my desk and they saw it, they they can't actually get into it. If I want to log back in, let's click unlock. The key file, the path should be correct. Asks us for the password. Type in the password. Oh, sorry. So by default, because I've done this uh, video a couple of times, it's pointing to the wrong key file. So we just need to open it, go to the folder that we chose, click the key file document that we have there, click open. Make sure this password is the original strong password that we put in. Click OK. 
and it logs in. So that's essentially in a nutshell how to set it up. Um, I went through this quite quickly, but you know this is a video, so you can go back and watch it again. Um, the most important thing now is is to methodically go through, add all of the websites and the accounts you want. It doesn't need to be a, a website or an online account that you save a password for. You might have um, you might have a PIN number on a bank card, uh, and you you could save that in here as well. Um, as you can see, it's just locked the system automatically because I was inactive for 10 seconds. If, if you get it too short, obviously, um, go back in here, log in, go back up to preferences, security, and change this to, let's say, 60 seconds. Um, one little tip to remember, um, if you open up um, a password entry and then you leave this, open that will keep the application open because it thinks you're active it thinks you're actively editing something so whenever you go in to find a password for somewhere you know um, either copy the password um, and then close this box if you leave it like this it will lock automatically in this case after 60 seconds okay i hope you've enjoyed this uh, quick demonstration um, if you've got any questions or comments please leave them at the bottom of the blog post and uh, yeah stay safe